Hello and welcome to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey that we call life. Guys, welcome back to the final installment of this month's uh, kind of teachings, lessons, whatever you want to call it, series on warrior culture, how we use these different tenets and different mottos, axioms, idioms, of the warrior culture to apply it to the modern battlefield and and combat the forces of weakness that are around us each and every day. Uh, I hope that you've watched the last three episodes. Uh, This is the final one. It's going to be called Complacency Kills. And we're going to get into what complacency is, why why it kills, and why you should try to always stay out of this this complacent, kind of resting on your laurels type attitude. Uh, On the front end, I have been... uh, in contact with Jamie Walden, the writer, the author of Omega Dynamics, the book that we've been studying this month, specifically chapter eight. Uh, Jamie is uh, a Marine veteran like myself. He is going to come on the podcast at some point if we can get the schedule down right. I got a new setup I'm going to try out uh, with him and some other guests. I got a couple other guests that are going to be coming on soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I also wanted to plug his uh, Warrior Summit that's coming up in June. So, um, I will put this down in the description box below. The Calico Buffalo Base Camp Warrior Summit uh, hosted by Jamie Walden and, and company. <clears throat> it's June 13th to the 16th uh, out in, I believe, Colorado, if I'm not mistaken. This year's Warrior Summit at Calico Buffalo Base Camp will be focusing on reviving our souls in the Lord through creation, adventure, and rich, intimate fellowship. I will drop that in the description below. You can email these guys and I, or just donate to the cause if you want to, uh, because those guys do great work and he's in the process of building uh, warriors and leaders for the Lord. That's what I've been trying to do this entire time. So all the plugs aside, I'll plug uh, everything from Three Pillars at the end of this episode. We're going to start with a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to dive right into complacency and how it is truly a detriment to your uh, health and wellness and mental well-being. Good to go. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, we just love you. We praise your name on the highest mountains. You are eternal. Before time is created and after time ends, you will still be here, Lord, guiding and directing us. Even though we are just motes of dust in your presence, you care about each and every single hair on our head. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful. We are not perfect people. We are not uh, worries for you all the time. In fact, a lot, many times we are cowards, Lord. And we rest on our laurels. We find ourselves in a sense of complacency. Lord, I ask today that you light a fire. Light a fire and break us through from our complacent attitudes. That we may be situationally aware of everything going on around us. Fill us full of discernment. Fill us full of strength. Fill us full of the knowledge, doctrine, and tactics to overcome and outmaneuver the enemy, Lord, each and every day. Lord, I ask you to be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning in to this the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. All right. Get my hat back on. I like this hat. Hope you guys do too. (laughs) My wife thinks it's only for St. Patrick's Day. She was wrong. So let's get started with a quote about complacency. B. Liddell Hart. As happened so often in history, victory had bred a complacency and fostered an orthodoxy which led to defeat in the next war. So what is complacency? Well, Jamie outlines it here at the very beginning of this section on page 227. If you guys have the book, which you should, I highly recommend getting again, Omega Dynamics by Jamie Walden. Complacency defined, it's a noun. A feeling of quiet pleasure or security, often while unaware of some potential danger, defect, defect, or the like. Self-satisfaction or smugness with the existing situation, condition, etc. So complacency is just being at peace when there's potential danger all around you. And there is. Not that you have to walk around being paranoid about stuff all the time. But you should walk around with a sense of awareness everywhere you go because the more people who are aware the more people who are situationally aware and especially in this fight that we're in the actually the safer the whole place becomes because you're consciously aware of your surroundings and things that are going on if people are actually watching and paying attention the bad guys can't hide 
they can't hide in plain sight because their actions are generally, if you if you pay attention to people's body language and how they behave and people always patent for stuff, they're always kind of looking around. If you go to the grocery store, for example, just kind of observe, you can kind of tell when somebody's doing something a little shady. I got, you know, my kids do it. If you look at your kids, I, I caught my kids stealing a candy bar the other day, thinking it could just, or it wasn't a candy bar, it was something like that. Um, I did it when I was a little too. As kids do this, but you can tell they're kind of hiding something, right? You can tell when people are hiding something. If you have a, a, a significant other, a spouse, or a, or a girlfriend, or whatever, and they're constantly, you know, doing this with their phone so that you you can't see what they're doing, that's defensive and it's deflective behavior. But you can pick up on these cues and know when somebody's lying to you or going to get ready to do something nefarious. You can tell by body language, actions, eyes, hand placement, things like that. When you're complacent, you just walk through and you don't even notice these things. So if the bad guys know you're not noticing things and never been checked or challenged or stopped because of, uh, of nobody paying attention, they're going to continue to do it because that's what bad guys do. They do things until they are checked and put back in their place by the masses. So complacency, again, is just being content with where you are. And if we go back to this quote, yeah, maybe in history you go and you win a battle. Everybody's, yay, we did so well, blah, blah, blah. And they get drunk and they have a good time. They kind of rest on their laurels, but the enemy gets back and they formulate a new plan and they regroup because they're going to come back with force again. And then you end up getting defeated because, oh, we beat them the first time. We'll just go back and we'll beat them again. No problem. Anybody who's ever played any kind of sport, you play one team one time, like, oh, yeah, I could, I could take those guys. No problem. Instead of taking each and every encounter as its own separate um, event. If you treat it as its own separate event, you don't find yourself in a sense of complacency because you have prepared for it and you're not worried. Okay, we know what happened in the past. We know we won, but why did we win? Because we outmaneuvered them, outflanked them, outgunned them, established fire superiority, whatever it was that helped us to win that battle. Let's do that again. And they know how they lost, so they're going to change their tactics. So we now have to be prepared for something new that they might throw at us. Hopefully our intel is good enough that we have kept track on the, on the enemy. That's part of it too. Being complacent is getting new intelligence, learning new skills, paying attention to what's going on. That way you're not caught completely off guard by the counterattack or the uh, initial onslaught of the enemy. Hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. I think it does. So if, it's, if it doesn't, let me know. But I think we're all speaking the same language here. So we're going to get into what Jamie says about complacency. Um, I'm going to read it. It's only a couple pages. Um, it's worth your time, but this whole book is worth your time. Um, and then we're going to discuss it uh, as per the usual. So Proverbs 1, 32 through 33 says, For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Spray painted throughout an area of operation for Marine infantry units are the words complacency kills. Like the Kilroy caricature of World War II, this saying has permeated the battle space of our modern war on terrorism. Granted, it was mandated by the higher-ups to diligently reinforce this motto, but it has been embraced by warfighters themselves due to its strategic value. Too many times a great warrior has become maimed or killed because of complacency or negligence. Comfortableness, routine, the mundane, and a lack of, quote, visible threats, end quote, lend themselves to a false sense of security, often with catastrophic consequences. Our higher up, the Lord God Almighty, knows the battlefield concept that complacency kills. In fact, not only does he give intensive warnings about avoiding complacency, he outright loathes the thought of his people succumbing to it. Revelation 3, 15 through 17 I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. There's, this is me now. There is always something that you could do to better yourself, to better your situation. Even if you're, you don't, you say, I lack nothing. You can always fill yourself full of more Jesus. You can always fill yourself full of more knowledge. You can always uh, continue to build, you know, not just material wealth, but spiritual and physical wealth too, as building your body, building your knowledge base, building your relationship with the Lord. You can always be better. But this is obviously, I think it's the church of La Laodicea in, uh, in Revelation talking about them being lukewarm, okay? 
Um, and I could be wrong. I'll, I'll go back and check that. Um, I'm going to do it now because I like to fact myself. Um, warm. And it was Laodicea. There you go. Boom. See, I know some things sometimes. Anyways, back to the text. Sorry to waste your time. Complacency, back to the text. Complacency is such a woeful thing because it compromises everyone within its reach. Think about this with regard to the church. We are warned against secret doctrines, creeping deceptions, and thieves coming while we are unaware. We are warned about the enemy who prowls and crouches near our door. 2 Corinthians 2, 10, 12 admonishes us. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he, can, that he stands take heed lest he fall. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. Slipping into complacency is a critical error with devastatingly observable effects in our personal lives. Health, marriage, relationships, work life, zeal for the Lord, spiritual disciplines, etc., etc. As well as our fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. Think about the power of a single statement from the word of God. If he says it in his word, pay attention. Now consider the abundant number of times he speaks to the dynamic gravity of complacency and vigilance. Woe to us if we do not heed his word. The after effect of not being, quote, on guard in the kingdom matters, on guard in the kingdom matters, or has already been foretold. The Lord will violently spit us out of his mouth, violently vomit us out of his mouth. Um... People will search from coast to coast looking for the word of God, but not find it. This is the most horrific and tragic famine of all time. We will cry out, but he will not answer. We will look on his back and not his face in that, in that day. The way of truth will be totally disgraceful and scandalous, and the great, fall, the, the great falling away is occurring. People will not tolerate sound doctrine. He will strike down and scatter the shepherds. Foreign invaders will rule over us. All our fighting men will become like women on the day of battle. The priest will cry out for revelation and receive none. Claimants to the Christianity to Christianity will be seduced away, and the powers of darkness will succeed in killing the saints wholesale, etc., etc., etc. Amos 6.1 Woe to you who are complacent in Zion, and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria, you notable men of the foremost nation, to whom the people of Israel come. People, who, and this is me now, people who had fought in battles and won great victories and done these things are now sitting back like, we don't need to worry about this anymore. If the bad guys come, we'll just defeat them every single time. That kind of attitude is what gets you killed. And if it doesn't get you killed, it'll get somebody to your left or to your right killed. We are not in the business of sacrificing our people to the meat grinder without putting up some kind of fight. If you get caught on your, on your laws, you can get caught in a sense of complacency. You are wrong. You're already defeated. Back to the text. There is a reason complacency a lack of vigilance, is so offensive to the Lord because it never only affects you. We just said it. It's like I've read this before. If my complacency resulted only in my, my personal harm or injury, not too many people would take note. Talk about like victimless crimes and things like that. It would be attributed to justice. However, in great injustice, complacency on the part of the people of God has consequences for millions of others. It literally gets people killed both spiritually and eternally, because there is no truth and righteousness in the land. The foundations of the throne of God are righteousness and justice, and it is the truth that makes men free from the curse of sin and death. Remember Psalm 11.3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If our three pillars are destroyed, this is me now. <laughs> uh, if our three pillars are destroyed, what do you stand upon? There's nothing holding you up. You either have to rebuild or you're finished utterly. Back to the text. Remove either of these pillars through complacency, laziness, or comfortable indifference, and we break open the floodgates of lawlessness and incur the obligatory disciplinary actions of God Almighty. The Lord proclaimed an everlasting warning when he declared, quote, At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. End quote. Zephaniah 1.12 Moreover, it is vile for the God of justice to bear witness as our carnal, smug, lukewarm, apathetic, contented love of self maims and kills multitudes around us. So vile, in fact, that the Lord likens the last church age, most of whom are under the assumption that they are, quote, a pleasing aroma for Christ, 
to hot vomit in his mouth that must be forcibly spit out. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 While people are praying, there is pe- or while people are, while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. People will lure you into a sense of complacency because they say, oh yeah, we've got it. We'll take care of it. We've got your peace. We've got your security. You don't have to do anything to prepare. You don't have to you know, have food saved just in case. You don't have to worry about you know, knowing how to shoot or hunt or, or raise chickens or anything like that. You don't need to be physically fit because there's nothing to worry about. There's no danger coming at you. That is the trap, ladies and gents. They lure you into a sense of complacency. They lure you into this feel-good feeling where I don't have to do anything else because it's already taken care of for me. What happens when the floodgates break and nobody's coming to save you? Look around the world right now. There's a lot of, look, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on that the average person, had they been more vigilant, may have been able to stave off some of this stuff. Okay? You have to break free of this slumber that they've put you in and be more self-sufficient and be more lethal. Not in the sense that you're out going looking for a fight, but again, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. We should all strive to be like Maximus, a great skilled general of our own little plantation that we've got going on. That's the goal. Be incredible, be capable of incredible violence, but have it under extreme control. Jordan Peterson, something, something to that effect, right? Another quote on complacency, just because things are going well now doesn't mean they can't suddenly go horribly wrong. And will you be prepared? What if X event happens? How do you survive X event? You should think about these things. Even in your daily walk routine to the grocery store, to the gas station, what if this happens? How do I respond? How do I survive? Do you carry a gun to these places? Are you equipped with a knife? Do you have uh, martial arts training? Are you, or are you just very aware of your surroundings and you make yourself look like a hard target? There's a lot to be said for that too. What is your plan? I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying you have to run around being paranoid everywhere you go, but if you want to take these extra steps and just be aware of things and then have a plan implemented in the event that something does happen, that's going to set you apart and, and keep you on this earth a lot longer. Okay? Back to the text. Page 229. Almost done with this section. Almost done with this section. It is essential to understand this kingdom reality. Complacency kills. Those of the warrior class who maintain the warrior mindset must seize this truth. Spray paint it on the walls of your comings and goings if you have to. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Jesus states sternly, Revelation 3, 2. Where you have been complacent, where you have enjoyed such quote, peace and safety, end quote, that you have forgotten God. Deuteronomy 8, 10 to 20. Read it and repent. Repent of your smugness of self-pleasure and the illusion of security. Repent of your contented lethargy and comfort-driven reality. He is faithful and just and will forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. In place of the slothful, self-centered, I'm sorry, in place of the slothful, self-contented enchantments coming from many of our churches, lay hold of the vigilant, Lay hold of the vigilant, dynamic spirit of the warrior class of the Lord. Be among those who are on guard and active in the kingdom and work as we watch, prepare, and yearn for the second advent of Jesus Christ. Guard the glory of the Lord. Combat the, quote, spirit of the age and be among those who are wise and, uh, and win souls. Proverbs 11.30 To conclude, Luke 21.34-36 and take heed to yourselves, lest any at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, surfeiting and drunkenness, and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Always pay attention. Always be watchful. Always be vigilant. That's what we are called to do. That is what we are commanded to do. This book doesn't, it's not, Omega Dynamics, Jamie Walter. Just because this book says it, 
He's addressing the book. The Holy Bible says that is our commandment. He's just trying to make an emphasis in this book that, guys, you've got to wake up. You've been lulled to sleep for so long. You're complacent. You're like the guys who have won the battles. Oh, we don't have to do anything, especially in America, especially in the West. Oh, we've got all this technology, all this stuff. Then why in the world are so many people in trouble, in poverty, and, 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 and just struggling to get through it? Day-to-day -day life. It's because we've handed over too much of our own sovereignty to people who don't care about us that much. And this is not a political podcast, but just look around you. If more and more people would become self-sufficient, then you could shrink the power of the, of the, of the, and the authority of the powers that be. Some people like that, though. They like to be controlled. They like every minute of their day to be filled with this peace and security and not have to worry about anything. Hate to break it to you people, but when things hit the fan... When the defecation hits the oscillation, as it were, you're not going to be prepared for it. And don't expect to go run into somebody who is prepared and for them to just hand you stuff and expect, you know, you to pull your own weight because you sure haven't done anything so far. It's like the little red hen story. The, the little red hen, you know, makes all the cake, does all the things and bakes all the bread and is ready to eat. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, can we get a piece of that? It's like, no, you didn't help with any of this. How can I trust you guys with a simple task if you had no interest and you were just lazy and slothful this entire time. How can I count on you to do your part? You can't. Now, can you teach people? Can you give them uh, a sense of self-sufficiency? Can you help them understand that there's stuff in the world, there's people in this world that are actively trying to kill you right now? Yes, you can. And you can prepare them for it. Martial arts training, physical training, firearms training, hunting skills, basic cultivation and farming skills, raising chickens, doing little things. You don't have to go completely off grid because that, that's not sustainable forever unless the whole thing goes down. We start back at square one. But if we all do our little part and all stay vigilant, vigilant and all pay attention to what's going on around us, it creates a safer environment, a safer community for our kids, for our community, for our, our state and local governments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can cut down on a crime if you, everybody does their little part. Now, there's little pockets of, of, of hedonism and stuff going on in, in the place. Those things are going to have to sort themselves out or they're going to have to go. Somebody's going to have to go in and, and pull out the good people and let the rest of them just kind of lord of the flies it until they aren't around anymore. Let's put it that way. Finally, ending with a quote. Complacency is poison because life is not a stagnant state of being. It is a journey. What you are today does not speak to what you will become either through hard work and diligence or through sloth and laziness. You decide how you want to live your life and you will determine what you do now is going to affect your life in three to five years. How you prepare and the decisions that you make right now are going to affect you years from now. So start today, pay attention, get active, get in the word, read the books, listen to the podcast, make yourself as, as educated as, and physically fit and spiritually sound as you possibly can be educated on the right information <laughs> because there's too many people out there that are overeducated on the wrong information and they think they're smarter because they got a piece of paper um, that says that they've got some you know degree somewhere from some place and just because you have I know people who have have no college education who are the smartest people I know okay so let's just take that out of the equation I got a degree I'm not a dumb guy but I'm not the smartest guy either. I'm constantly learning, okay? That is how we are supposed to be, is constantly learning, constantly seeking his guidance, getting pulled out of the mire, pulled out of the muck, broken free from this complacency that will ultimately kill us or people around us. That is what we want to avoid, okay? Don't be a casualty in this war. Good to go. That's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate that very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I am Chase Tobin. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. If you like what we've got going here, please go ahead and subscribe to the show. Whether you're listening to this on uh, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, wherever, subscribe to the show. Leave a rating if you can. Send this right now to a friend. Send the whole series to a friend. Say, hey, check this out. If you're listening, on, if you're watching on YouTube or Rumble or Odyssey, anything like that, please subscribe. Leave a comment. I like the engagement. I'd rather have like five people that I talk to on a regular than like a bunch of people who don't even, they're kind of transient, right? If you guys like this, please share it. Check us out on Three Pillars Podcast website, three pillars podcast at wordpress.com. For all three things, three pillars, blog posts, fitness tips, 
uh, quotes of the day, you name it. We've got it all there. Check us out on Good Pods. Good Pods is a podcast discovery platform. Helps little guys like me get discovered. We're doing pretty well over there. Let's keep up the the, the trend over on Good Pods. All that's in the, in the uh, description box below. Instagram, Facebook, check us out over there. It's a lot of, uh, just depends on what platform you like. It's not necessarily the same material everywhere you go. Um, but that's where I, I do a lot of engagements on Instagram. Throw a lot of reels up, uh, spots from the show and everything like that. Same thing on YouTube. Uh, I've got two YouTube channels, one for a um, more fitness kind of lifestyle thing. The other one is specifically just for this podcast. So, But you can find me anywhere. Just look it up. Um, definitely make sure you check out this event, um, the Warrior Summit coming up in June. I will not be able to make it because I've got a trade show uh, late June. I think it's going to conflict with this. Uh, but I'm going to share the information down in the description box below. Make sure you check out uh, the Warrior Summit that Jamie Walden's putting on. Uh, he's said he would definitely like to come on the podcast and drop a little bit of knowledge with us. I'm going to see if we can make that schedule work out. It might be after this um, this event because he's got a lot of planning and stuff going on for it, but we'll try to get him on. I've got Nate Norman coming back on the podcast. So uh, if you guys are watching this today, I'm trying to get, get him um, uh, in, not in studio, but I'm going to get uh, an interview with him, uh, probably ready for, for the first uh, episode in May. We'll see how that goes. That'll be next Friday. I've also got another gentleman uh, who, through Nate, uh, wants to come on the show. Uh, we'll see what's going on there. Uh, so stay tuned. Got some more interviews. I told you guys I try to do more interviews this year, and it's starting to line up. I got a new setup, too. We'll see uh, how that works, uh, specifically for the interviews. Instead of me just running my sock all day long, we'll see how that works out as well. So um, thank you all again from the bottom of my heart for tuning in. You guys mean a lot to me. Uh, this podcast helps me get my thoughts out, get 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 myself refocused every week uh, to go into a great weekend and to um, continue doing what I do. <laughs> it's being the motivator, right? So that's my pleasure to you is to continue to do that as much as possible. I think we've hit all the wickets, ladies and gents. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always and then kick you guys out for a fantastic weekend. How about that? Let us pray. Father God, we just love you. Lord, thank you so much for being in our lives. Thank you for... Uh, just filling us full of your peace and your security that is different from the peace and security of the world. Your peace and security is, is everlasting and, and eternal. And when you say that we have peace and you have our, our backs covered, you've got it, and we know it's true. But Lord, we also thank you for giving us the tools to fight in this world, to take a stand against the wickedness and the evil and the spiritual powers and high places that are just full of darkness. Thank you for giving us a fire to fight and take back ground for you. But you still fight those battles for us. But we are willing and ready and able, Lord, because you equip us, you call us, you train us, you protect us, you guide us and direct us. And for that, we're eternally grateful. Lord, I ask that you be with anybody tuning in today or any time. Give them faith beyond measure, strength to endure, and just a heart for you that's just open and ready for you to work through them to change the world because that's what it's all about lord lord i ask all this in the holy name of jesus amen all right guys this is a three pillars podcast i am chase tobin aka tobinator the motivator until next time tobinator out